today to Acts chapter 18. Come on, Jacob. If you're our guest here, we've been studying out the book of Acts. And we are going to continue our study here looking at chapter 18 today. And uh, can we please give it up for Corey uh, Sharon and Mark for the reunion. Uh, say thank you bro, so much for sharing your heart and helping us connect with the cross today. And uh, what can we say about Davion and D'Lo helping us have conviction and giving back to God. Let's lift them up in a great way today. But I'm excited to dig into chapter 18. And uh, if you were with us last week, we studied out chapter 17, and we saw that Paul is on his second missionary journey. And in chapter 17, he was in Thessalonica, went down to Perea, and was in Athens there at the University of the World. And at every step of the way, as he's preaching the word, he's having an impact, but there's also opposition. So we're going to find him now. He continues on, leaving Athens. After hanging out in that place in the Areopagus where the great thinkers are yeah. and impacting them, he makes his way now, leaving Athens and going to the city of Corinth. Let's dig in our text in Acts chapter 18. Oh, oh. On, the Bible says, after this, after what? After Athens. Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. Wow. And there he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, Priscilla, because Claudia had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Oh, wow. Paul went to see them. And because he was a tent maker as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath, he reasoned the synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. Again, here we go. Paul, in his custom, he's going to the Jews, and he's reasoning the synagogue. Verse 5. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching and testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. Yeah. But when the Jews opposed Paul, it became abusive. He shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I'm clear of my responsibility. From now on, I'll go to the Gentiles. Yeah. Then Paul left the synagogue, went next door to the house of Titius Justus, a worshiper of God. And that's just what you do. If that person's not open, you just go to the next person. Come on, Jacob. One door closes, another one's going to open on up right there. Verse 8, Crispus, the synagogue ruler, and his entire household believed the Lord, and many of the Corinthians who heard him believed and were baptized. Amen. One night, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you. And no one's going to attack and harm you, because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. Wow. So here he's in Corinth, this next great city. And as his custom is, he's going to the Jews and preaching to them. Again, there probably was an impact, but evidently they didn't like it so much. So they, they're abusive. Paul just says, all right, fine. Hey, I did my duty. I went to you guys. Now I'm going next door. Now I'm going to the Gentiles. And the Bible says he goes next door. So maybe he was literally like next door. Nice. So can you imagine? Like, okay, fine. You know what? All right, I'm leaving the synagogue. Now I'm going right over here. He said, and goes to his God fearer, tiniest justice. Yeah. Preaches the word. Now, God is fun. And hopefully yeah. catch the humor in this Because it's actually quite comical when you think yeah. about it. Yeah. He leaves the Jews He leaves the synagogue He goes to study his justice, his Gentile He lives right next door Who gets impacted in the very next verse right there It says Crispus, the synagogue ruler oh, wow. And not only just him But his entire house So this Jew responds to the gospel oh, wow. And he goes right next door And then says many Corinthians believe And heard and we're baptized. Yeah. And Paul now is next door. Next door. These Jews have to walk by hearing Paul preach every single day. That must have bothered him a lot. And especially since the synagogue ruler became a Christian. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Like, we're yeah. every day. There's Brother Christmas just rolling in. Right? Like, oh my gosh, like, what the heck? What <laughs> but you can imagine... Why God would come to Paul in a vision one night. Hey, don't be afraid. Right. Yeah. Why? 
because we've been studying out Paul and his missionary journeys. What, is, what has this dude gone through? Yeah. He's gone through a stoning. Right. Yeah. Almost killed right there. Yeah. Right? People want to kill him as he's preaching. A riot caused up in the city right there. Yeah. In Philippi, he was beaten with rods in yeah. the stock right there. Stripped and naked. I mean, this dude, at every turn as he's preaching, has been going through it. And now he is in Corinth again, preaching, and people aren't liking it. Yeah. And now he's having this impact. He's like, oh my gosh. It's about to go down again. Oh, oh my so of course God would come to him and say, hey, don't be afraid. Right. Keep on preaching. Yeah. Don't back down right now. Don't shut up. Keep going. You know why? Because I have many people in this city who are going to respond to your preaching. I am with you. You got nothing to fear. So he stays there for a year and a half preaching the word of God. I believe we've all been told these words at one point or another. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. As a child, maybe even as an adult. Yes. Oh, We've all been afraid. Yes. Some of you might be afraid right now. I don't know. Oh, oh, amen. But fear is a powerful emotion. Yeah. It grabs us. Yeah. It grips us yeah. with an immobilizing tear right. and dread. You know, there's a story here in our history in Sacramento during the Gold Rush era mm -hmm. and during the Wild Wild West times, right? That I think it relates to this fear. It's about this guy. He was a professional thief. And he stirred fear. He stirred fear as the desert wind stirs tumbleweeds. He terrorized the Wells Fargo stage line for 13 years. Roaring like a tornado in and out of the Sierra Nevadas. Spooking the most rugged frontiersmen. In the newspapers from San Francisco to New York, his name became synonymous with danger. During his reign of terror between 1875 and 1883, he's credited with stealing the bags and the breath away from 29 different stagecoaches. Wow. And the guy did it all without firing one single shot. His weapon was his reputation. His ammunition was intimidation. He had a hood on his face. No victim ever saw him, and no artist could actually sketch what his face looked like. No sheriff could ever track his trail. And he never fired a shot or took a hostage. And he didn't have to. His presence was enough to paralyze every oh, yeah. Black Bart was his name. A hooded bandit armed with a deadly weapon. Now, Black Bart reminds me of another thief around that's roaming the trail still to this day in the city. And you know this Black Bart, and you also have never actually seen his face. But you can't describe his voice or sketch his profile, but when he's near, you can feel it in your heart. If you've ever been in the hospital, you felt that leathery brush against your hands. If you ever sensed that someone was following you, you felt the cold breath in your back. If you ever had to do something or say something that involved confronting someone, you lay awake the night before because he was the one who stole your slumber. He was the thief who left your palms sweaty as you went for that job interview. He was the con man who convinced you to swap your integrity for your popularity. It was him who got you to say nothing and do nothing rather than deal with the problem to keep your mouth shut. He was the scoundrel who whispered in your ear, no one really cares about you when you went out to reach out for supports. You know, he's the black bard of your soul. And he doesn't want your money. He doesn't want your valuables. He doesn't want your car. What he wants is your peace of mind. What he wants to go after is your joy. His name, you probably guessed it, fear. Fear. Fear wants to steal your joy. Fear wants to take your courage. Fear wants to leave you cold and naked. Fear's mode of operation is to manipulate you with the mysterious, taunts you with the unknown, fear of death, fear of failure, fear of defeat, 
fear of rejection, fear of being alone, fear of just living. His arsenal's vast, and his goal is to create cowardly, joyless souls. You see, fear, fear doesn't want you to make the journey to the mountain where God is trying to take you. Fear figures, man, if they can just rattle you just enough, you'll take your eyes off the lofty peaks of life where God is trying to take you to something great. So what will happen instead, you'll set up for a dull, drab, safe existence just right here in the flatland. So today, my job and my hope, what I try to do is what God is doing right here with Paul, is to inspire you and to encourage you inspire. with the very words of God. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. This phrase shows up in the Bible 88 times. And in those times, it's always with the promise, hey, don't fear, I'm with you. I'm with you. And Jesus right here is giving Paul that vision. You're doing great. Man, it's going awesome. You've got nothing to fear. I've got your back. I've been with you the whole time, and I'm not going to stop yeah. right now. Awesome. And it's this yeah. same vision that God wants to give you this morning. Because yeah. Yeah. maybe some of us are afraid. Maybe some of us are a little tempted to not preach. Maybe some of us are a little tempted to just be silent. But God is telling you this morning, church, my brothers and sisters, do not be afraid in this city. We heed that. And God is going to use us in a powerful way. I got three challenges this morning. Three things that we got to believe to not be afraid. And the first one being this. Do not be afraid. Point number one, anyone can be saved. Hey. Anyone can be saved. Anyone. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter who you are. The skin color does not matter. It doesn't matter the city you came from, whether you grew up in the country or you grew up downtown. It doesn't matter if you got a PhD or no degree. Anyone can be saved. Yes. Paul right on, here is in know. Corinth. He's in Corinth. I don't know if y'all know, but Corinth was a straight, wicked city. Yeah. So much so the Romans looked down on Corinth. Like, oh dang, you from Corinth. Right? They knew you came from like, oh my gosh, that place is full of immorality, lewdness, greed, selfishness, just pagan worship. Like, dang, it was just a crazy place. It was a commerce place. When I think of San Francisco, I think of New York, but I think of Corn. Oh, 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 true. Because right? yeah. yeah. the, yeah. the other thing that had it, it was known for its sports. Gladiators were there. Yeah. The races were there. All the stuff, the Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just a crazy place. Yeah. Or maybe even just like Las Vegas. Hey. Oh. So can you imagine? Paul's there, he's in that city. And he's preaching, but then he sees all the wickedness. Like, oh my gosh, like, what? Yeah. But this is why he reminds the Corinthians over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. What does he say? This is what we believe. Check this out. What did he tell them? He told them right here, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. He says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Absolutely. That's my king. That's my savior. There was no grave that could hold that guy down. That guy resurrected. And at that resurrection, that means nothing can hold me down. Nothing. That's what gives you and me power, the cross. Because on the cross, why it's the power, that word means dynamis. That's where we get our word dynamite. That means that God, through the power of the cross, can eradicate any sin in your life. Isn't that amazing? Any sin, it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter how wicked it might be or how good in your eyes you might be, but man, 
God can heal you from any sin. Yeah. 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 There's nothing that he didn't die for. Yeah. He died for all. And here's the beauty of it that encourages me. All right, I don't encourage you, but man, he died for everything before he became a true Christian. Right. Yeah. And even after. Hallelujah. Oh. Some of us, man, like we're grateful that man, we're not bogged down to sin after. Yes. Are you with me right here? Come on, Jesus. Yes. Jesus died for it all. Yes. Before that day, on that day, and after that day. That's the power of the cross. Romans 8 1 says there's no condemnation in Christ. Yeah. You shouldn't be accused for anything. It's like, no, I died for that. Yeah. We got the greatest advocate sitting at our side. You know, the, the greatest attorney, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's right. Yeah, Sebastian did that? No, 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 don't worry. I died for that. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Jayla accidentally said that. Don't worry. I died for that. Oh, oh, <laughs> Jeremiah, a little disrespect for those moms. Okay. Oh, Jeremiah! Oh, because of the cross. Anyone can be saved. Yeah. Oh, my. You know, and there in Corinth, it was yeah. evidence. Yeah. It was evidence. Yeah. The greater the wickedness, the greater the miracles. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Jacob. When Jason and Sarah took over the church in San Francisco, that was the heartbeat. Like, yeah, people, this is like an atheist place. People don't believe in that, all this stuff, all that stuff. You know, just, you know they're, they sway this way and all that stuff. But it didn't matter. You, know, you know what that means? My Bible says these guys are open. Yeah. My Bible says these guys are looking for God. Yeah. And we see that church bows in eight years to over 400 sold out disciples. That's the power of the cross in any city from San Francisco to sit in the South Paulo. Go right back here. It's impacted every single one of you. Check this out. Go over here to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Come on, Jacob. Come on, Jacob. I got stuff to say this morning. Come on, say it. Look at this place. God reminds us right here of, of who we were. What we came from. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 says, right here. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor the idolaters, nor the adulterers, nor the male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders. Nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor swindle, slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Check this out. And that is what some of you were. But you were lost. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. Everybody was a jacked up church. He's like, hey, I want to tell you where you came from. Don't be deceived. Don't think now after baptism that you can live this worldly life. No, been, that old life is dead. This is who you guys were. You guys were sexually immoral. You're idolaters. You worship all sorts of things. You guys were never faithful to anyone. You're sleeping around on your spouse. Homosexuality. Like, man, it's all this lewdness. You know, attraction doesn't have to lead to action. Attraction does not have to lead to action. Nor thieves. Nor greedy. Drunk are just getting wasted all the time. Slanders, talking bad about people, gossiping behind people's backs, trying to get money, trying to get things. You're a swindler. Yeah. These people wow. will not wow. inherit the kingdom of God. Wow. Yeah. Don't be deceived. Many people want to church hop and go from place to place to find a church that fits with their own theology. Right. So where they don't have to wrestle with scripture like this. Like, eh, you know, let me let me go find a church that talks about Jesus' love. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you what. Jesus is love. You know what he loves? He loves his truth. Jesus understands my heart. Yeah, he understands your heart is wicked. Oh. And the Bible judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 13. I can't get anything else out of that. Man, read that. that was my life, sexually immoral. 
world. That was my life. I lost my virginity at 18. And searched for impurity my entire life until I got serious about the Bible. Never faithful to any girl. No, I what? Even no matter how much I, I love you so much. Yeah. I love my pleasure more than I love the relationship. Idolize myself, idolize money, idolize my image, idolize my status. Idolize my, that, that, that was my life. Stealing from my jobs, got fired from my jobs. Just crying. A drunkard. Used alcohol to, to, to gain control over women. Yeah. Come on, Jacob. Come that was my life. Yeah. I was deceived. I'm like, yeah, I could keep living like this and call myself a Christian. I'm like, oh, then, I, then I got serious about the Bible. My world was brought. Yeah. And it's scriptures like this to put the fear of God in me, but also yeah. encourage me. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I can change. That's the power of the cross. Yeah. And then I got to encourage you. Like, yeah, maybe you feel like a knucklehead. Maybe you feel like, man, I can't change. Maybe I can't overcome. Like, oh my gosh. Like, God doesn't know me. Oh, God absolutely loves you. Yeah. Thinks you're yeah. awesome. That's why I put his son on the cross to die for you. Yeah. Come on, Jacob. So those things don't want the baptism. The sinful nature is cut off. Yeah. You're no longer bound by that. Yeah. And as you walk with God, you can see an incredible thing happen. You change. Yeah. And get better and better yeah, and stronger. Come on, yeah. Come on. You know, I gotta lift up this morning. I'm so proud of Corey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That is a change for me. Yeah. 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 You all heard where it came from. Yeah. And there are many people that, 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 that have, have had similar experiences and didn't humble out to the scriptures. Yeah. Mm. Didn't have the faith to believe. But I'm so proud of Corey. Because I remember the young man got baptized over there. We think we were over there at the Holiday Inn Express. Yes. yes. He came up out of the water like this. Just like fired up. Yes. Yes. He's a young yeah. man like that. But then when I came back, we came back to take over the church. And we were rolling to the street. Like I didn't recognize this. You think I had a beard and everything. Like man, this, this, this is not a young man. This, this is a grown man now. This is like, Anyone can be saved, yes, no matter right. your background, where you came from, or what you've been through. Come on, yeah. I'm so proud of Dave Yon and D Lo. You know, my wife studied the Bible with D Lo around this time, uh, yeah. several years ago. And I'll never forget when I think after one of the studies where you talk about your life and all this stuff, and Courtney comes over, it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. This girl's been through a lot. I'm gonna pull this girl in and I'm gonna be a mom. Come on, come on, Dila. Dila's a flat miracle. Yeah, yeah that's true. Because again, a lot of stuff that she's been through, a lot of stuff that she's had to endure. She was dating Davion at the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she saw that I'm gonna do this. I don't know what we're gonna do, but I just, I gotta give up everything. Yeah. Come on, Dila. And she made the bold decision to drop that relationship. She wanted to be with God so bad. Yeah. I'm so proud of her. She did that. She came. She's an incredible person. She's an yeah. incredible woman. Yeah. Yeah. And this girl yeah. sits down and studies the Bible with the best of us. Yeah. And inspired them to have an incredible relationship. Yeah. But Luke Daniel, David was like, oh, I lost my girl. Something like that happens, yeah. and you're challenged like that. Yeah. You got you, you, you either get like really ticked off, like, oh my gosh, let me go find out what this is all about. Yeah, yeah. come on. And I moved Davion. I remember Davion, I, I got his number, I met up with him at Panera Bread out there in Natomas. Okay. He didn't know what to expect. He thought I was black. <laughs> I don't know why, I was talking like this, I don't know why. But I remember sitting down, sitting by with him, making sure this is going to be for God. Right. 
Yeah. yeah. As I went through, it was for God. Yes, it was. And I'm so proud of this young man. As you see him now come up here, share his convictions like this to, to save from God. Where he's coming up, this is a changed man right here. To the light. Yeah. Right. To have faith in the cross and the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. No matter where you come from, no matter your back, no matter what's going on, the belief that you can change yeah. through what's happened on the cross of Jesus Christ. Fear wants to keep you in bondage. Yeah. Fear wants you to be deceived. But Jesus died to set you free. Don't be afraid. Anyone can be saved. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Okay. 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 We're going to preach the cross. This is awesome. That's how people are going to be won. This is awesome. But also to continue to impact this city and impact this world, we've got to understand the solution is always leadership. If you're a leader, if you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, because you follow Jesus, who was a leader. And so my second point is this. Don't be afraid, point number two. Just make sure leaders are made. As long as leaders are made in God's church, we got nothing to fear. We will evangelize the city. We will evangelize the world. That's always the solution. And right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, check this out. This is what was going on right here in the church. In verse 4, 14, the Bible says, I'm not writing this to shame you, but to warn you as my dear children. Even though you have 10,000 guardians of Christ, you do not have any fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. For this reason, I'm sending to you Timothy, my son, whom I love. Who's faithful, Lord, and he'll remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. Oh. You know, the beauty of Corinth, that it was a huge city. Many people believe the population was over 600,000 people at this time. It was big. And right here, what we just read right here, as Paul writes this letter to the church in Corinth, he says, hey, you know what? Even though you have 10,000 guards in Christ, you don't have many fathers. Many believe what that meant was the church had ballooned up right. to 10,000 disciples. Wow. Wow. 10,000 disciples. Wow. I mean, that's the impact of the cross. And yet, what it didn't have was the fathers. Meaning, the leaders to take care of all the spiritual children in the church. That was the issue. It ballooned up and it grown like, whoa, man, people are being impacted everywhere, all around the world. You can walk around the sea like, dang, there's a disciple right there, there's a disciple right there. Right. So but what lacked was the leadership. Wow. Now, why was that? What was a possible clue? Go back over here to chapter three. Oh, okay. Come on, Jacob. Come on, Jacob. Come on, Jacob. Brothers and sisters. I cannot address you as spiritual, but as worldly. Oh my God. <laughs> Just read the Bible. Okay. Here, infants in Christ, I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you're still not ready. You're still worldly. For there's jealousy and quarreling among you. Are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere men and mere women? For one says, I follow Paul, another follow Paulus. Are you not mere men and women? Woo! So, what was the clue? Like, why had, why weren't there a ton of fathers? Why wasn't there this growth? Because they were still so worldly. Yeah. They were not maturing. They were not going after the relationship with God. Right. They got that spiritual milk, but man, they were not going after the solid food. Mm. And they were acting pretty worldly. Now, mind you, Corinth was a pretty messed up place again. Yeah. Right. Right. And so there was all this worldliness that was going on in the church. This is, I could not address to his people who live by the Spirit because of the way you respond. Oh, and that is the great fight. Right, yeah. To live by the Spirit. Wow. Yeah. 
So if you're a baptized disciple, you've got the Holy Spirit inside you. Yes. Yes. And that Holy Spirit prompts you to do what's right. Yes. And what God wants. Yes, it's true. And how do you make sure you stay in step with that Spirit? Because you're, you're a man, you're a woman who walks with God every day. Right. You're the guy, you're the girl that when nobody's around, that's the real test. Right? Yeah, that's true. You are who you are when no one is around. Yeah. You're not an Instagram Christian. Whoa. Where it looks like you're a Christian because you quote scripture on Instagram. Come on, Jacob. Are you are you just like you're, you're like, hey, let me show you the oh yeah, all the church service. Hey, okay. Yeah, but when the video is off, what's going on? Right. If we put a video on your life when you're alone, what would we see? Would we even want to see that? Or would we be cringy or really worried for you? See, that's what was going on in court. See, after baptism, now what? Now what, man? You're a devoted man. You're a devoted woman. Like, all you want to do, man, I just, I just want to walk with my God with such a passion. I want to grow. I want God to use my life to change this city. I want everybody to know that it's obvious. I love God. Yeah. And I've got a spirit. Yeah. So I fight every day to give him my best. Come on. Come on. We're going to make mistakes, but I already dealt with, dealt with yeah. that before. There's no condemnation in Christ. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. You understand? <laughs> We're all coming out of sleep. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. We're all coming out of sleep. Yeah. 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 If some of us have been in the world for like a long time, we bring that stuff in. Like, oh, yeah. And, so it's not like, you know, we, we bring this baggage with us. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Insecurity. Oh. Pride, oh. selfishness, oh. laziness, oh. cowardice, oh. you know, stubbornness, oh. independence. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? Then you got songs like Miss Independent, like, ah! Girls around the world, like, come on, man. I'm trying to change the world here. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. That's why you got to go after God every day. Yeah. Jacob. That's why. Yeah, absolutely. That's why, because you know, we're all coming out of slavery, and that, that yeah. stuff wants to take you back out. Right. Yeah. It's true. Right. right here, God's got an incredible plan, wants to use you in such a powerful way. Yeah. And right here, I love back in 1 Corinthians 4, the solution, obviously, Corinth was jacked up. I had a lot of issues. The solution, Paul was like, hey, I'm sending Timothy, my son. Yeah. He knows my way of life. I trained him. I discipled him. I showed him what to do. I can't come, but if you just listen to him, Follow him. Imitate him. You'll know exactly what to do. And that'll fix your problems. And that's going to be as far as like, like somebody would just say, hey, just listen to what I do and watch what I do. And man, that'll fix it. That's a leader right there. Then anyone can go to any situation here. Hey, sis. Hey, bro. I got it. This is what I've learned. All right. Just watch. Just watch me work. Right now. Boom. That's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. How do you get there? Go over to Second Timothy chapter three. Come on, Jacob. 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 You guys with me? Yeah. Yeah. Over the game for a Bible study. Second Timothy chapter three. So that's the first Timothy. Oh, thank you. I'm close by. I'm helping Jordy out here. Second Timothy 3, verse 14. But as for you, continue what you learned and have become convinced of. Because you know those from whom you've learned it. Now, from infancy, you've known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ. All scriptures God breathed yeah, and is it. useful for teaching, rebuking, or correcting, Whoa. training righteousness, yep. so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Oh, oh, yeah. Paul is telling his son of the faith, continue what you learn, Timothy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You remember yeah. Yeah. what you've been convinced of. You know my life. Yeah. Right. You know 
Don't forget, because Timothy right here was having a hard time. Yeah. Don't forget what you learned. Don't forget what you taught. See, Satan wants to snatch what you learned. Yeah. Satan yeah. wants you to see me like, what are you doing? But you got to get in your word to get your bearings on straight. Yeah. And know that he's trying to help you become something incredible, to use you in such a powerful way, like he was able to use Timothy right here to go into a situation mm. and fix a mess. Right. Yeah. You got to believe this more than man. You can go into any small little Bible talk group or go to any situation with a brother or sister. Yes. And because of your relationship with God, because you allow yourself to be trained from the scriptures, you can go in and be an incredible solution. Yeah. That's the promise for every single one of you this morning. Right. This right here is the Bible says, hey, all scriptures God breathed. The word is from God. That's meant to be used to teach you, to correct you, to rebuke you, to train you. Yeah. That's lost today. Yeah. Wow. You don't have this discipleship setting right. where there's this training one another, where there's this sharpening. Sadly, right. people are, are all over the city right now coming to churches. Right. And they think that they just come, sing some songs, and that's it. There's no impact. Right. Yeah. Yeah, not right. And nobody's in your life. Right. Right. True. Nobody's trying to take the Bible out. And really help you to grow. So you're thoroughly equipped for every good work. Yeah. No, there are even those that can study the Bible and know a lot about the Bible. Yeah. 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 Like maybe some of you here could come up and tell me, like, yeah, this was written this day. Yeah, it was written by this person. Actually, yeah, this person was in this city. And you could tell me a lot about that. Right. But it makes a total difference is okay, well. Is the Bible being used in your life? Right. Yeah. Come on. So we can know a lot about the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. But we really don't know the Bible right. if it's not really being directed and pointed at you and calling yeah. you to something great. Yeah. That's discipleship. Yeah. You know what? That takes humility. It takes It takes humility. A whole lot of it. It takes humility to be taught. To know that maybe there's some things you just don't quite know. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. It yeah. takes humility to get corrected. I mean, how, yeah. how did that go growing up with mom and dad? Oh, right? right? <laughs> how did that go? I mean, Bubby is like, he'll be, he's three years old. This guy, like, oh my gosh, he's so cute. I have to stop, like, not laughing. Yeah. Like, rebelling it in him. Right. Or even at times I'm listening to, like, talk back to his mom, like, mom will say something to correct him, like, repeats it right back. Right. No, you listen. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you do that. <laughs> but hey, then when dad goes, Bubby, come here. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> oh, Bubby, no. Don't talk to mom like that. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds just like he knows. Like he knows. Yeah. He knows. Yeah. I'm trying to train him like he, yeah, he respects me, but he's also got to respect his mom, too. Yes. 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 Respect your mom. But it takes a minute. <laughs> be trained to be pushed. You know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Jason and Sarah were over here for our anniversary service. And I'm reminded that I'm always learning. Come on, Jacob. Come on, Jacob. God's not done teaching me things and training me things and pushing me. Yeah. You know, it was a great time. He came over and they came over here for our anniversary service. Jason Priest started the community. It was awesome. But the night before on Sunday, we went out to lunch. We had dinner. Dinner. And it's at that dinner where they dropped the bomb that they were taking over the LA church. So it's a little bit of a heavy time, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, okay. And I'm kind of like, you know, searching of heart of how I'm feeling about the whole thing. But then as the dinner's closing out, he just had some few short words of teaching and training and correcting for me. Oh, you know, it's just like, bro, they've been, things have been good, but you got to crank Sacramento a little bit more. I like it. Right? Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> immediately, like, you, you, you know when you get discipled on something? And, yeah. You, know, you, know, you don't want to get discipled on it right there? You know, like, you got all these excuses you want to fire back? <laughs> <laughs> right? And I'm just like, hey, Courtney can see that, you know, I wear a lot of my face. And she's sitting right next to me, and she like taps me on the shoulder, and she's like, that man, like, you're being prideful right now. <laughs> Come on, Courtney. <laughs> and I did not like that either. <laughs> she was so right. Because even 
still, even though Jason and Sarah have been with us eight and a half years, like I'm still learning. I'm still being made into the leader that God wants me to be. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. But I know we can all relate yes. to that experience right there. And you've got to believe this this morning that, man, you don't know who God set you up to impact. You don't know what you're going to oversee, but every single one of us has skills, we have talents, we have abilities that God has blessed us with. And you're not just here to put time in a seat. Right. Yeah. You're not just here just to exist. No, you're here to do something great. Yeah. To be used by God in such a powerful way. And now that happens, number one, you walk with God. And number two, discipleship. Yeah. And I'm so proud of the, the man in particular in the legendary Bible club. Oh. Because I've been going to the Bible talk in the afternoon on the Thursdays, and uh, the last several weeks, Victor's been having the guys do the lesson for Bible talk. Yes, yeah. The first one I got to experience was AZ right here. AZ. Yeah. And uh, he did an outstanding so job. Good. So I was like very, very impressed very for his first time oh, leading the Bible talk. The next one I believe I saw was Sal. Yeah. And Sal did an outstanding job. And, uh, and this last week, I mean, he's not here this morning, but I was blown away as well by Ethan Bruno. Yeah, he did an incredible yeah. job um, with the discussion. I'm like, see now, like, man, leaders are being made. Yeah. And I know it's happening on the men's side, and it's happening on the women's side right there. So we got to know this morning, we can't be afraid because leaders are being made here in SAC and all over the world. Take that spirit of humility. Let me take that spirit of humility right there that Timothy had with his father in the faith. Right. To trust the process. Trust that even though maybe this last week, the last couple of weeks, there's been some correction going on. Maybe there's been some teaching. Maybe even some rebuking. Or maybe just some training. You got nothing to fear because God is turning you into something great. Something to be used in a powerful way. Are you with me this morning? Lastly, let's go here to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Let's close out here quickly. Don't be afraid of this last one. Do not be afraid. Point number three. Jesus rose from the grave. The Lord tells Paul in Acts 18, I'm with you. You got nothing to be afraid of. There are many in this city. And here as you write this second letter, 2 Corinthians, here in chapter 1, there are some encouraging words as he writes back to encourage the church that I believe in. we need to hear this morning. And right here in verse 3 he says, Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles. Amen. All of our troubles. All. Not just the little ones. Right. But all of them. So that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we're comforted, it's for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so if you also share in our comfort. Yeah. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardship we suffer in the province of Asia. We are under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. Even in our hearts, we felt the sentence of death, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God. Who raises the dead? Yeah. He's delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we've set our hope that he'll continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers, that many will get thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us and the prayers of many. Amen. Don't be afraid, because Jesus rose from the grave. Yeah. That's what Paul is reminding the Corinthian church right there. Yeah. Let him know, hey, Praise God, the God of all comfort. He comforts us in all of our troubles. And let me tell you what, we were going through it yeah. in Asia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But man, we got to get there. We got to understand, like, you know what? Hey, we came to realize, hey, we 
can't remind ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. But we rely on God. Our hope is on God. God who raises the dead. Right. Come, on. Come, on. Come on. That's what we believe this morning. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Whatever trouble you may be experiencing this last month, this last year. Amen. Amen. That God comforts you yeah. in all of it. Yeah. Our hope is in God. Yeah. Our hope is in the power of God. That's yeah. right. We're not trying to get this through this relying on ourselves. Right. No. You know, I learned we learned some things from Paul right here. He's obviously writing to encourage the church, but the first thing we see right here in verse three, he's praising God, the God of all comfort. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't know about you, but that's usually not my first response. Amen. Yeah. Usually Amen. complaining to God. <laughs> that I'm uncomfortable in this situation. Yeah. But right here, he's praising God, that God of all. He's totally God-focused. Wow. Yeah. 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 Comfort and troubles, understand this, go hand in hand. Mm. Troubles are the things that you face, the pressures every day. The daily right. pressures. Yeah. yeah. And... This comfort that he's talking about here is not like a little cheer, but it actually means to strengthen. Right. Yeah. The God who strengthens. Yeah. The God who strengthens through what? His Holy Spirit. You know the other name that Jesus gives for the Holy Spirit? The Comforter. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. true. The Comforter. Yeah. So when we rely on God, we get power through the Holy Spirit wow. to be able to endure whatever trouble, whatever pressure we are facing. Wow. Wow. I think that can be contrasted at times because we tend to want to do what the world tries to do and, and try to live a life of less pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's true. It's true. Or if there's pressure, we, we want to run away. Yeah. 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 And we don't true. run to God. Who yeah. strengthens us. By the Holy Spirit. Wow. Another thing too that challenged me as I was going through this, like I'm tempted to pray, like God, God, get rid of this. Oh. God, take this away. Take this away. And sometimes I might not know what God wants to do when He wants me to pray. Like God, strengthen me through this. Amen. It's true. It's true. Come on, take God, help me get through this. Yeah. Obviously, you're doing this for a reason. Then I need to tap into your power. Yeah. Yeah. So I know what you're trying Absolutely. to do. Yeah. Yeah. Easy, bro. Number two, we forget that why we're going through these troubles. Sometimes, guys, it's not for you. Yeah. It's for other people. Talk about it. It's for the people. Other people to see. Okay, how is she going to respond right now? Yeah. Or how is he going to handle this? Wow. Yeah. Because you are a beacon of hope for others and they're watching. Right. Yeah. yeah. And they have faith in God. That wow. they are inspired, they are encouraged by your just your stand, your hope on God, your reliance on God. Wow. Or if you're going through that and you handle it faithfully, then you can be a beacon of hope for others that are going through the same exact thing or maybe about yeah. to go through yeah. the same right. That's exact true. thing. That's true. Thirdly, Paul was real yeah. about what was going on. He tells him in verse 8, we, we don't want you to be uninformed, brothers. And this is something recently I've learned. That we can't, res we can respond like this. Okay. Where we don't want anybody to know what's going on in our life. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah. We think no one cares. Wow. They don't really care about me. They don't really, they don't really want to know what, what's going on. Yeah. And we forget that that's just honestly a prideful response. Yeah, oh, that's right. True. You don't need to tell people that are close to you, hey, say, sis, bro, pray for me. Yeah. Because you got to understand, we're not just individuals here. Yeah. 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 This is a family. Yeah. yeah. And we're united together, 1 Corinthians 12. Right. Come on. You're part of the body of Christ. Right. As the soon to be Garcia's reminded us in the welcome this morning. Oh, wow. So that means we need each other. Yeah. We need each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll go through it, all this stuff. But man, that it's a great reminder. Like, oh, right, right, hey, man, we were going through it. We don't want you to inform it, man. We felt the sentence of death. I felt like I could just die right now. Wow. I'm under so much pressure. Wow. And we think that nobody wants to hear about that. Right. Man. And you're wrong. Yeah. Right. 
Because one of the things, what, what did Paul say? Thank you for your prayers. Pray for us. Pray. Yeah. Yeah. That's humility. Yeah. Yeah. Letting your friend, letting all those close to you, hey, pray for me, man. I'm going pray through this. Yeah. Hey, this happened in my family. Hey, this is happening at my job. Or this is going on at school. Or somebody said this to me. I'm going through this. Like, pray for me. Yeah. 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 Because your hope is in the Lord. Right. Come on, Jacob. You know, Paul understood and believed that God had delivered him before mm. and that he was going to deliver him again. Mm. He was going to deliver him again. And he looked back at his life like, man, this happened to me on this missionary journey. This happened on this second missionary. You know what? Wow. Yeah, we're going through it now. Now we got to Asia. But you know yeah. what? Hey, God's going to deliver us again because my hope is in God. He remembered the promise. Don't be afraid. Yeah. It goes through the scriptures. Yeah. For I am with you. Yeah. Come on. Remember these words were spoken 88 times to great men and women. Hey. Whoa. God told Abraham when he called him to make him to a great nation, nice. don't be afraid, for I am with you. Let's go. God told Jacob, don't be afraid, I'm with you. When he told come him, on. go to Egypt, because my promise is going to come true. Come on, God told Moses when the Israelites were standing right there about to cross the Red Sea, don't be afraid, you're going to lead these people across the Red Sea. God told Joshua, don't be afraid, when he was called to lead the Israelites out of the road this time. God told Jeremiah, don't be afraid. Don't preach to those stubborn people. And Jesus told the faithful 11, don't be afraid. I'm with you. Go to all. We're told not to be afraid. We're reminded of the promise that that promise brings God's presence. Why not be afraid? Because God's with you. Yeah. Mm. We're in the presence of God. We're always reminded of the victories that we've had in our life, or even the victories we see in the scriptures. And maybe as I finish right here, that's what you've got to be reminded this morning. That you could do your own little YouTube video of your life yeah. and look back like, oh, whoa. Ooh, He's delivered me from the lots. Yep. Wow. Yes. Yes. Yep. And He will yep. continue yep. to deliver me. <laughs> That's what I'm reminded of this morning. You know, this is what God has done in my life, but I know that he's not done yet. Maybe some of you got to hear that this morning. That he's not done with you yet. Maybe for some of you, like, you literally just got going. Yeah, maybe you were just baptized last week. And maybe you feel like, oh my gosh, you're just getting started. And it's going to be awesome. you got to go back and watch those videos. And Paul right here was reminded of the core of the church. To do the same. You gotta believe, because like first John chapter four, verse four. Fine. You two children are from God and have overcome them. Because the one who's in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Mm. There in Acts 18, Paul probably felt that, like, oh my gosh, these guys are so opposed. But Jesus said, Hey, there's a lot more people in this city, man, that are gonna become Christians. Yeah. There are more with me than those that are with them. Right. And that's what we have to believe this morning. Yeah. Come on, bro. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Yeah. You are more than conquer. Yep. You have nothing to fear. Yeah. And today, it's just getting back to that vision that Paul had in XIT. Mm. So you can see what God sees. Yeah. Yeah. And anyone can be saved. Yeah. As long as leaders are made, mm. it's going to be awesome. Yeah, so and there is hope beyond the grave. Amen. You have nothing to fear. Oh, you remember earlier, Black Bart. Hopefully they didn't forget about him. But you know what? It turns out, you know what? He was actually nothing to be afraid of either. When the hood came off, there was nothing to fear. You see, when the authorities finally tracked him down, they didn't find a bloodthirsty bandit from Death Valley. They actually found a mild-mannered dude from Decatur, Illinois. Wow. The man the papers pictured as storming the mountains on horseback was in reality so afraid of horses that he rode to his robberies on buggies. <laughs> this guy's name was Charles Boyle, the bandit who never fired a shot because he actually never loaded his gun. Wow. See, fear is just this, false evidence appearing real. Wow. We gotta take off any false hoods that we might have in our life. We cannot let the enemy think that the enemy is surrounding the city. There are more with us than them with them. God says, don't be afraid of them. Take off the falsehoods. 
Open our eyes. Don't be afraid because he who's with us is greater than he who's with them. God doesn't want you to be afraid. Come on.